Hello, this is Carl Irwin with a uh, quick uh, breakdown tutorial of a uh, an application of a recent uh, method that I have uh, come up with uh, with respect to creating uh, subsurface scattering uh, type materials using OpenGL. And uh, this is not a perfect method. You can check that tutorial that I put out very recently within the last couple of days. Um, it has <clears throat> sort of a masking technique that you can use uh, with a uh, lighting, uh, very similar to some of the shadow um, masking that uh, work that I've done uh, in the last few weeks, uh, only this time applying uh, other materials to uh, be turned on and take over uh, for primary materials to generate sort of the uh, suggestion of a subsurface scattering. Uh, and uh, to uh, make it appear as though a material is translucent and able to accept light uh, through its um, mass and, and, and through its uh, uh, material uh, through the other side in sort of an opaque way. Uh, so this is uh, uh, an application of that. I didn't quite have an application worked out when I made the other tutorial. I was just kind of showing the uh, the method, but I, I, you know, this is an example of an application. It's not perfect. I don't claim that it is, but this is an OpenGL rendered asset um, that's been placed into a track scene, a very simple scene uh, that I did with a very, you know, small pocket camera. So you can see the resolution isn't all that great on the uh, camera scene, and and there is a discrepancy. I'll just point out between the asset, uh, you know, sharpness and resolution, and the rest of the scene. But I did my best to kind of put it in there very quickly, just to demonstrate this uh, application. Uh, so quickly, I'll show you. There's this uh, scene of a tabletop with a there's a mug here and this uh, a little tablecloth on here on the wood surface, and uh, this uh, dish, this ceramic dish, and. Uh, in it is this big candle, this big old candle that's been melted down a little bit. And uh, if I play it back, you see a few things. You can see uh, the uh, light, uh, the little flame in there seems to be causing this subsurface scattering effect uh, in this candle. And on top of that, we have this a little bit of a lens flare that's showing from the uh, light. Uh, and you can see how this is put together. Now, the candle appears to be... Uh, a subsurface scattered kind of material and that the light seems to penetrate into it uh, and bounce around w inside of it. So we do see shadow, we do see reflection, and we do see specularity, but at the same time it seems to accept light and absorb it and it bounces around. And then certainly from the flame we can see that the light is uh, uh, coming through it in places that are thicker like up here on the edge or there's more density, we're looking through more of the uh, wax. It's a little bit darker and there's less light coming through it in here. Uh, <coughs> you can see where it's melted down. This would be a thicker portion. We can see that the light is not quite extending as far and there's a fall off to the light that you can see there. Um, and this uses that uh, same method that I uh, described in the last tutorial for masking. And I'll open up that material and show you very quickly. But um, anyway, this is an application. This is what I'm talking about with respect to uh, using this kind of a uh, material uh, using OpenGL. So just to be clear, the candle is OpenGL, the lens flare is OpenGL, and even the shadow underneath the uh, candle is an OpenGL element. There's nothing in here that's been rendered out using Blender internal or cycles. Everything has been done through the uh, OpenGL. GLSL system and then composited in the video sequence editor. Uh, so let me explain how this works real quick. <clears throat> so here's our candle and we're in GLSL mode and we're just looking at the candle right now and also the shadow that's under the candle and uh, <coughs> I'm not going to go over the tracking. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials about tracking out there. That's not going to be the scope of this. Um, but I'm just going to look at the material. So if I play this back you can see that uh, in fairly real time here, we see this uh, flicker going on. And what's going on in here is I've made my material, but inside are two small point lights that are high energy and a small distance that have been uh, uh, set to kind of bounce around. They have some animation on them and some keyframe animation going on. So they're moving around against each other and they're causing this flickering sort of uh, 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 thing to happen. Okay, so the, it appears as if there's a flame in there dancing around. Now to look at the material real quick, let me select the candle. <coughs> we'll open up a uh, node editor here. And you can see that I have on this uh, candle material, there are 
one, two, three, four, five different materials. Okay, there's the original first material, which has the uh, specularity uh, and base kind of uh, um, uh, color to it, and it accepts lights. So this is not a shadeless material, and uh, you can see how that looks. Okay, still kind of a waxy figure, but uh, it doesn't have any subsurface ability to it. Okay, just a uh, shadow casting and it has uh, the specularity on it. You can see kind of the uh, shape of it with the uh, specularity. Now these are all, all the specularity elements are mapped uh, via the reflection mapping uh, in that texture. But otherwise it's just a plain uh, default texture. Then we have a general subsurface texture. And I'll grab that here for you. That looks like, th oh, that's not it, sorry. A general subsurface texture looks like this, and it is uh, a Fresnel material, and you can see that it doesn't have shadows on it, um, and doesn't have any specularity on it. It just accepts the lights and demonstrates kind of where the general lighting in the scene, how it affects the uh, candle. Okay, the general lighting affects the candle in this way. And these two are mixed together uh, using a color mix node. And I mixed it so that the, uh, this uh, subsurface kind of material is it affected by a factor of 0.4 against the other material, the base material. And that looks uh, something like this. So again, this is just a very basic subsurface, mi subsurface scattered mixture of my base material and then the Fresnel material. So you can see that while there is some shadow casting going on, it seems to accept light and the light bounces around inside, giving us this very general kind of waxy formation. Okay. Now, on top of that, <coughs> I have another material, which is a glowing uh, subsurface scattered material, and this is to be affected by lights that have a specific energy and meet a certain threshold. And uh, this material looks like uh, this. So this is kind of the high energy subsurface scattering. You can see the color is a little bit different because as light shines through the material, it would bring out the internal color properties to it. So it's a little bit more yellow, certainly brighter, but it's another Fresnel material, and it's mostly affected by the lighting in the top. And then I have also uh, a darkened version of that, slightly uh, darkened and color corrected with a curve, R RGB curve. It brings out a little bit more of the orangey tones. And what I do is I mix this together. These two materials are mixed together using a mask, which is a normal mask. And this is a texture from outside of Blender that just grabs the uh, normals, the parts that are facing away from the camera. And uh, it mixes in that darker color uh, to give it a little bit more of a density so that the parts that are facing away from the camera are a little bit thicker on the uh, uh, you know, X and Y axis away from the camera would be a little bit more dense uh, and wouldn't accept quite as much light from our perspective than the parts that are flat and facing us. So it's an imperfect kind of mask. It's kind of a forced mask, but it does generate a little bit more realism. And uh, you can see I have this mixed together via the factor. These two colors are mixed together via the factor of this mask here. And this is what we end up with. So this is our high energy uh, lighting um, subsurface uh, texture. Now all of these are mixed together using uh, another texture, another material rather, which is this one here, which is the subsurface mask. And you can see that the subsurface mask is again an application of the uh, first mask, the first subsurface, but it's all white, it's all grayscale. scale. Now on top of this gray scale, I placed an RGB curve that clamps down this texture and makes it so that we have this kind of an out outcome. <coughs> we have parts, and you could actually make this grayscale take out all of the, um, uh, remove all of the saturation if you wanted to. I don't think, it may, perhaps it actually works a little bit better keeping the color in there, but what we have now is this texture that uh, is high energy only. So the parts down here that are just getting the general world lighting, they're not, a fa they're not factored in. Only these parts that are receiving the internal lighting are, are factored in. If I play this back, you can see uh, how this dances around in here. Okay, And the parts that are purely white will uh, bring out 
this uh, high energy subsurface scattered material. And all of this is mixed together using this mask as a factor. So we mix together our high energy subsurface, <clears throat> our base material, and our low energy subsurface, and we end up with something that looks like uh, this, which is the final output. And now let me just point out that uh, there's only a little bit of science in here. This is mostly artistic license. Uh, this is an artistic based uh, material. Uh, we're making choices on the color and choices on the masking uh, to generate something that has a verisimilitude, something that looks realistic even though it's not necessarily ray traced perfect. So if you want something that's authentic and ray traced, you want to use an internal, uh, another render engine. Uh, we're using OpenGL capabilities that are high speed and some artistic license to generate something that is realistic but not necessarily fully real. Okay, so that's how we got that. Now if I go back to my camera view, this is an attract scene, and I have the background uh, uh, set as a background image, the original uh, video, so you can see how this tracks together. Now, I'm not going to render it this way. I'm just using this to kind of demonstrate uh, how the uh, it can be composited together via the track scene. So I imported this video into the tracker. I rendered it as a 3D scene. I output that uh, render that uh, tracking scene into the ca candle scene and then I set my candle where I wanted it so that it would uh, then be uh, uh, composited in as an, uh, an independent layer. Now what I did from here is uh, <clears throat> with the uh, background image off Actually, let me turn that on again. You can see the shadow that's underneath. This is just an image, a plane with some alpha transparency that I painted in there. Uh, and I just painted in the shadow. So if I turn that off, you can see the shadow disappear. So this is not a generated shadow. It's a painted, again, artistic license. I just painted in where I thought the shadow would be, and I left that on a plane in there. So what I did <clears throat> is I rendered out via OpenGL render buttons alpha transparent enabled frames of the candle and the shadow separately. Now also in here I have a flare. Now this flare is a plane uh, with some flare elements on it from one of my flare packs that you can get at BlendSwap. And I uh, parented it to the center of the uh, candle and there's a constraint on it to attract uh, to the camera, much like I did in a previous tutorial. So that wherever the camera goes, the flare is always following the rotation of the camera. And there's some animation here. The flare goes from large to smaller with some bouncing scaling on the uh, X and Z axis. And I rendered this separately as a separate layer, just a video uh, layer, from the uh, candle. So if I turn off my candle, turn off my shadow, turn off my uh, background, I rendered this out as a separate layer. And once I had my final layers, I brought them into the uh, video sequence editor, and I'll take you there, and I composited them together. I took down the opacity of my flare, and I got my level set just right. Um, that flare, by the way, in the original scene was set to X-ray, so it would show through so I could get a better real-time uh, view of it. Uh, once I throw it in the compositor as a separate layer, though, that becomes irrelevant. It's a, uh, you know, placed on top of my, the rest of my scene. So then I just composited it through a vignette in there. I added uh, my, you know, typical poor man's motion blur uh, that I've used before. Added some noise for some film grain, film grain over everything. A couple of adjustment later, layers for uh, color uh, uh, grading, and uh, this is my final output. And then I rendered this uh, using, you can use the internal render engine because uh, we don't have any scenes in here. Or if you want, you can use the OpenGL buttons. I find that when you're not using scenes, the internal render engine is a little bit faster. When you are using scenes, you must use the OpenGL render buttons because the uh, OpenGL preview will not render via the internal render engine. It will take over and try to try to ray trace render uh, your scene. So anyway, that's uh, how I did it. Just one more look at the uh, final output. And you can see that we tracked in an OpenGL element using a subsurface scattering texture material. And, uh, you know, it's pretty passable. If you had a couple elements like that, I think you could really get away with it. Uh, so anyway, that's just an example of maybe an application for this kind of uh, material uh, creation in the OpenGL and GLSL uh, rendering. So uh, a little bit simpler than some other uh, math node type examples that are out there uh, and a little bit more direct, but certainly uh, dependent on some artistic uh, license and some artistic choices. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Uh, compositing and uh, masking out a subsurface scattering material 
and putting a candle into a uh, scene here. So uh, hope, hopefully you find a use for this, and I wish all of you the best of luck with this technique, and happy blending.